obviously hoping that they're not going to be quite so far behind at the end of the first 40 minutes today. There's the full team, Chris Mortimer, Anderson, Armstrong, Farrah, Peter Mortimer, Gary Hughes, Steve Mortimer, Folks, Batiri, Pittman, Robinson, Johnston and Coveney. A little doubt, uh, in the ranks, Brian Johnson, one of them, Gearan, Morris, O'Connor, Beatty, Trudgett, Henjack, Fraser, Graham Wynn, in the side with Walsh, Jansen, Dowling and Stone. Canterbury running from right to left as Tony Armstrong starts this sudden death semi-final. Brian Johnson, first of the Dragons to get a touch. Taken to ground by Michael Pittman and Gary Hughes. And this is Walsh, who's just beyond the 22 line. Now Stone. He's going to give it to Jansen. He's put it behind him. There's a chance on for Andrew Farrah. Coming at him as when he's missed him. It's a try! Well, what a sensational start for Canterbury Bankstown. 35 seconds into the game. Andrew Farrah scoring a try as Robert Stone lost that ball. Farrah simply following through, picked it up. He beat the attempted tackle from Graham Wynn and went into the Paddington Hill corner. Well, just the thing Ted Gossett was hoping for. Last weekend we saw Canterbury start the match slowly. A great hit there by uh, Taz Bateri. Knocked the ball from Robert Stone. Andrew Farrah on the spot. A stop start here with a goose step and away he goes from Graham Wynn, manages to keep his balance. Hits it. Not looking bad, but getting away in the final moments. So Canterbury Bankstown leads St George by four points to nil. Well, there's no doubt that the most important stage in this game is going to be the first 15 minutes for Canterbury Bankstown. If they can tackle well in that period, they can certainly win the game. In the past, their defence has been extremely lazy in the first 15 minutes of the game, but uh, well, isn't it good for, for Ted Glossop to see that tremendous four-point start? Chris Anderson crossing the 22 line. Pittman. Chris Mortimer. Bouncing down inside the 22. St George are now going to have to call on all their experience to gather themselves together in the face of having a, a try scored against them after just 35 seconds. Uh, it could have the other effect, of course, everything could fall apart. Dowling, sending it back for the kick for Graham Wynn. The breeze is coming out of the east at uh, around 10 k's. And that means that it's coming across the ground as the penalty goes to Canterbury Bankstown. Farrow taking the line kick and finding it just on his side of the halfway. Tony Armstrong takes the tap and it's with Steve Mortimer. And Billy Johnston throws the dummy to Mortimer on the run round and going back to the blind was Taz Batiri. He's right on the halfway line. Mortimer, Johnston, that's Stephen Folks. And taken to ground by three of the St George players, Henjack, Trudgett and Fraser. Right in the centre of the cricket ground as it goes back to Mortimer. Now to Gary Hughes, a cutout pass, beats uh, a couple of the uh, Canterbury players and goes wide to the flank and then infield for Anderson. And now it's with Johnston across the ground. Then Mortimer, now Hughes, Robinson. Robinson, held about six metres into St George's territory. Allowed to play on, it's with Bateri now. And Bateri is uh, grounded by Michael O'Connor. The groans from the crowd indicate or ask the question, uh, when is a tackle a tackle? And there's a kick for touch, finding it inside the 22. Well, this from is the Steve Mortimer. 
ideal star for Canterbury Bankstown is exactly what their captain and their coach would have been looking for. And this is the situation in the game where St George have got to gather themselves, concentrate on their job and uh, just play their own game and play it well. Yeah, and a, and, a, and a different start to last week where the Canterbury forwards, instead of just running one out, they're putting on a few runarounds, a nice variation around the rucks. Saints coming up with the scrum win and Tony Trudgett is put down by Gary Hughes and folks just outside the quarter. That's Graham Wynn taking it up through the centre and that hurt Taz Batiri. That's uh, Batiri lying behind where Wynn played the ball. Jansen, oh gee, Jansen just almost handed it to Armstrong for Canterbury. A very shaky start by the Dragons and now Canterbury have knocked on and uh, the advantage uh, rule applies and St George to play it. And immediately St George swung into that pattern of attack that we're used to seeing from them in the last four or five matches. They worked the play to the centre of the field and then brought it back blindside. This is something they've worked a lot during this semi-final series and I can't see them changing it today. Again with us today on our commentary team, former Australian captain Max Krilich and a disastrous start for the Dragons. A uh, bad start for the uh, Dragons, Ray, but a great start for the Bulldogs. Uh... I've just noticed there how growing winds running into the rucks with a lot of uh, venom and uh, the way that St George is going to get back into the game is for his mates to follow him but, uh, straight into the rucks very hard and uh, as Taz Batiri is finding out he's finding a lot of trouble getting up off the ground and uh, uh, Saints will get back into the match but uh, it's going to be hard for him. It's a bad start getting a try behind like that after only one or two minutes and uh, Canterbury, uh, it, it could be a bad thing for Canterbury too because they might think we've got the game won and... Uh, uh, they could better watch themselves. So there's Max Krillich with the two sides of the story. The players like this man Dowling and this fellow Jansen, uh, the experienced players, it's up to them to settle the Dragons down and tell them to try and get that uh, first try out of their mind against them. Penalty to the Saints. A number of St George players went into this game reportedly carrying injuries and I've been watching Brian Johnson very closely in the back play and I, I just can't help but think that he hasn't overcome his injury. He appears to be very uh, short-strided, quite hoppy in the back play. Beattie taking the line finder. And here's the tap to be taken now, deep inside Canterbury Territory. St George are very wide and very deep to the right, and it's coming right with Beatty. And he's met by Hughes and by Folks. Centre field just outside the 22 is Tony Trudgett, one of their form players, is tackled by Robinson and Johnston. Dowling is the dummy half. Jansen going with him, but Dowling takes the front line and is met by Folks and pulled down. They're 12 metres from the Canterbury line. Henjack, Trudgett, now Wynn, Wynn galloping into an opening, taken about five metres out from the line. Geez, an improved football the last five or six weeks, Graham Wynn, that's the sort of form we know he can produce. Trudgett, blindside, O'Connor, quick pass to Stone, can he pass? Yes, it's up with Gearin, Gearin, nowhere to go. The full marks there to Chris Anders, he, num he nullified what could have been a scoring chance for St George. Here's the last for the Dragons, Henjack gets around Mortimer, gets the kick up, and it's going to be too deep. In fact, over the dead ball line on the full, so it'll come out to the 22 for the place kick restart. Yes, I think uh, Maxi Krillich has pin pinpointed Canterbury's main problem for the day. Graham Wynn, big, strong running forward, and he's the man that Canterbury have got to pull down. Uh, I've noticed that St George, though, as Max also said, are not supporting him. Johnston. That's Pittman with that right knee, again, heavily bandaged. Mortimer shooting for the touchline and he's found it again. Good kick by Steve Mortimer finding it down on the St George 32 metre line. That's the Rank Arena replay of the accuracy of the Steve Mortimer kick in general play. Again, St George win it. It's out with Trudgett. It was a bad pass. Uh, he's able to get around uh, Gary Hughes. 
Well, of course, Tony Trudgett's a very strong player. We can push through that first line of defence, and he's one of the unsung heroes of the St George side. Does a lot of organising and attack, and a lot of hard work in defence. That was a heavy hit from Andrew Farrah on Graham Wynn. Now Jansen. St George reaching the halfway line, trailing by four points to nil. Henjack, Trudgett, O'Connor, Johnson, and Farrah again coming up very quickly, parceling him up, ball and all. Good tackling from Andrew Farrah. O'Connor. Five tackles now for St George. Henjack running as a decoy, it's going back to Wynn, who puts the kick in. Chris Mortimer getting across, it's infield, and it's Canterbury in possession now with their full back. Front on tackle made by Ivan Henjack. Anderson, Mortimer, Armstrong. Falling across from the left wing. As Canterbury form themselves up into an attacking pattern. Pittman playing it. Robinson. Every time he handles, the Canterbury fans rise. The kick for Chris Mortimer. That was a good kick by Mortimer. It was one of those kicks that went into a hole and made both the fullback and the winger move. It's, it's far better result for Canterbury than a kick that would have gone straight to either of those players. Gearin. Who would have fond memories of the grand final victory he enjoyed playing with his opponents today. Jansen. Now it's Henjack. This is Walsh. Tackle with Robinson's help. Now Johnson. And that kick again in field and uh, safely taken by Chris Mortimer. Tony Armstrong. Tackle by Michael Beatty. Heavy tackle too by Beatty. Chris Mortimer. Well, in, uh, in, Chris, in uh, Steve Mortimer and Gary Hughes, Canterbury have got two of the best kickers, chip kickers and grubber kickers in football, and uh, Watson George are going to have to be careful of. It's just watching this little kick over the top because they're playing no cover defence on the early tackles, and that's when they could get into danger. John Coven. Johnston. Took it ahead and stopped, and the defence hung off him, and he was able to take play very close to the halfway line. Steve Mortimer. A kick in general play, but that's out on the full. And the scrum to go down about seven metres on the Canterbury side of halfway. Third grade today to Souths over Cronulla, 25-0. Reserve grade to the Saints over the Bulldogs, 10-4. George would have taken the field with their morale high. The reserves getting up against Canterbury. But I would think that confidence would have been taken from them very quickly as it uh, turned out with Canterbury leading by four points to nil. Farrah, who's been responsible for a couple of very heavy tackles. And a much improved player, Steve Mortimer. Trying to work his way through the forward area he ran into stone and win and now it's with Batiri giving it to Coveney and Coveney is met by Henjack and Dowling now it's with Mortimer Gary Hughes Chris Mortimer that's a good tackle by Trudgett still that wrap goes to the right and again Steve Mortimer has found the line another good kick Finding touch this time, 15 metres away from the St George line. Yes, and there's no doubt that Canterbury have got it on their minds uh, from that last week, or that last week effort against Parramatta, the way they started the game so badly. And uh, they're a little bit tentative, they're not really throwing the ball around, but Steve Mortimer can try the, the uh, game brilliantly so far with his kicking for touch. St George coming up with another scrum win. And great defence there by Andrew Farrer, realised St George had the overlap, left his man, came in and made a ball and all tackle. Now it's with Beatty. He's able to take the tackle of Peter Mortimer and get it back to O'Connor. And a penalty has been given to St. George. Offside against Canterbury Bankstown.
This was Michael Beattie standing in the tackle of Peter Mortimer. Giving it back to Mike O'Connor. And that's, that's where the penalty came. And that's what you certainly call playing the uh, advantage, I guess. He was... He's obviously ruled that Canterbury were well offside in the play of the ball, which would have been, what, three or four passes uh, previous. Yes, it was a, a certainly a delayed decision by referee John Gosher. We're near the halfway line now as we come back to the blind with Tony Trudgett, who gives a short ball to Steve Morris, and Morris is taken by Armstrong. Fraser. Robinson over the top. Henjack Stone. tamer start to this sudden death semi-final than was predicted by some of the judges. The pass from Johnson to Morris looked fractionally forward. And that was that Morris is uh, bundled to the ground by Robinson. And that was that blind side attack again from St George. Into the middle and back down the blind. Win, win. He, he, he'll score! Win has gone down the touchline to score! Well, shoddy defence from Canterbury Banks down. Here's the try on replay, Graham Wynn from Dummy Half. Got away from Armstrong, beat Robinson, dummied on the inside, beat Peter Mortimer and was in to score. Four points all with that try to Graham Wynn. Well, shades of last week, both Canterbury players going the open side. When they had a double marker, one should have covered the blind. But again, as you said, oh, a very shoddy defence and uh, he very simply should have been put into touch. Try came on the last tackle, and it was that variation that Bill Anderson has been talking about all year. As Guerin from the touchline fails, not kicking, but in fact running with the ball on the last has brought the St George side a try, and it's four points all. That try will have boosted the St George confidence, Max Grillich. Oh, great try to Graham Wynn. Poor blindside defence by the Canterbury players, but uh, Wynn, uh, Wynn ran with a lot of determination and spirit then, and he showed what you can do when you put, you know, run on the boil, and uh, he tested the uh, Canterbury defence with a great try to come back into the game. Certainly a couple of the Canterbury players should hang their heads in shame. A couple of feeble attempts at tackle as we find another penalty going to the Saints. On the Dragons, 22. Beatty's line kick. A good one. Finding it six metres on the Canterbury side of halfway. Play on the showground side. Jansen. Short ball back for win. Lost down to Mortimer. Mortimer across the ground. Straightens. Now delivers. Peter Mortimer to the halfway. Beats one. Turns it inside. Tony Armstrong. Taken by Beatty. Taz Bateri. Canterbury. With 17 minutes of the match gone. Now, I believe, have decided it's time to give the ball air. Let the ball do the work and work on the extremities of the field. Yeah, for well, as much as that try might have lifted the confidence of the Saints, uh, it also might uh, make Canterbury start to play with a little bit more urgency. Uh, that sensational start for them uh, could easily have seen them just sit back and become far too complacent. Saints inside the five and a chance for Tony Armstrong to take Canterbury back to the undisputed lead. He's almost in front and 32 metres out. Armstrong filling the position of the injured Ross Conlon hits it nicely yes he's got it Armstrong takes Canterbury Banks down back to the lead at six points to four
Mike O'Connor. Back by the Thierry for Canterbury. He goes back and serves it up to Farah. And a bustling, very strong run by Farah on his own quarter. Batiri, Stone went in with the shoulder and Batiri met him with uh, the same equipment. Johnston feeding it back for the kick to Chris Mortimer. Taken in spectacular fashion by Geary. Gary Hughes making the tackle. Fraser. Jensen taking it up uh, strongly. And Jensen has now taken play about 35 metres out from the Canterbury line. Henjack trudge it. Henjack on the run round. The kick out wide for the flankers. But it's gone into touch. And a scrum will go down midway, 22 halfway. Canterbury's end of the field. goes out to Peter and uh, he's caught and tackled by O'Connor Pittman Bateri Stone and Jensen or Walsh it is combining to make the tackle Robinson went head on by John Dowling Mortimer, here's Chris Mortimer, taken by Beatty and Trudgett. Chris Mortimer feeding off that um, short ball from Gary Hughes as Steve Mortimer again kicks and finds it. Beautiful kicking from Steve Mortimer. The scrum will go down 15 metres out from the St George line. Again, the Saints win it. Trudge it. BD. Four to the scrums to the Dragons. Johnson. Bouncing short of Chris Mortimer. And they're going to engage in a, a kicking duel, it seems. Graham Wynn will have to hurry. No, he, he's got it covered. Well, now Chris Mortimer may decide to break from this kicking duel. It's a ball that uh, Chris Mortimer should have caught on the full and not allowed to a bounce. It could have gone anywhere then, including into touch. He persists and uh, kicks the ball. Johnson sends a torpedo punt over the head of Armstrong. It's done a right-hand turn and found touch. Brian Johnson, the kicker. A mighty gain for the Dragons. I thought Chris Mortimer may have broken from this kicking duel when Graham Wynn came on the scene for St George. I think he was happy to kick with Brian Johnson. But Canterbury has won the scrum. Armstrong. Well, St George is still playing uh, no cover defence on the early tackles and there's no doubt that Brian Johnson's carrying a leg injury and isn't as mobile as he'd like to be. And with, with both of those things in mind, I'd like to see Canterbury kicking the ball more than they are. Chips over the top, grubber kicks, etc. Oh, ball put down by Michael Pittman and running with it is Colin Fraser. 
taken by Billy Johnston and um, Gary Hughes. And they're the sort of errors you just can't make in semi-final football. Well, St George has already made one of them and they paid a very dear penalty. Here's Graham Wynn. Graham Wynn, like a man possessed, takes it within about five metres of the line. Gosha says, get off him, let him play it. It's out with Walsh now. Mortimer went high. Nothing dangerous, though. Out now with Henjack. A grub kick by O'Connor, marked beautifully by Peter Mortimer. And, and well, he did because uh, Stevie Morris was racing into that corner to chase. Penalty to Canterbury. St. George offside. Four three the penalties to the Saints. Tap to be taken by Steve Mortimer, Billy Johnston, Taz Batiri. Yes, and in the back play, we can see that Chris Mortimer, the Canterbury fullbacks, moved into a position directly behind the play of the ball. This gives him the latitude to go open side or blind side, wherever he can, uh, wherever he feels there's a hole. And I'm sure that he'll get involved in this play in the next one one ruck or two. Coveney, he's lost it, and uh, the referee is going to put a scrum down. Six four then to Canterbury, and neither side really has shown that they've got their game in shape in the first uh, in the first 25 minutes of this match. Again, St George coming up with a scrum win, and here's uh, Trudger trying to make the the break, but Peter Mortimer made the tackle just in time. It's with Graham Wynn, and he holds back a pass and cuts out a man and gives it to Henjack, and Henjack turns it inside. Boy, Morris has lost it. Canterbury banks down, coming away with it. Folks has tackled. Ten metres his side of the halfway. Gary Hughes, Steve Mortimer. There's Chris Mortimer into the play now. Beating Trudgett, taken by Beatty. Steve Mortimer, a scurry from dummy half and given to Johnston. Dowling and Beatty making the tackle just short of the halfway line. Coveney turning it to Robinson. Robinson holds Henjack at bay with one arm and delivers a pass around the, the back to Peter Mortimer, who plays it, and Taz Bateri runs with it now. Taken to ground by John Jansen. Steve Mortimer has fallen in for this kick and decides against that and decides to pass, and it's with Tony Armstrong. Now it's Folks, now it's Mortimer. There's a try coming. Billy Johnston! Billy Johnston is in for Canterbury Bankstown. The second try that has come from a team opting not to kick on number six. Steve Mortimer not kicking, holding up a pass. Tony Armstrong doing so well. And look at the joy on Billy Johnston's face. Here's Armstrong. He got inside his opposite number, then was taken. Folks backed up. Mortimer did likewise. That's the 22 line, and Billy Johnston was setting his sails and going for the line. Canterbury Banks down 10 now. St. George 4. A great variation by Mortimer. He shaped the kick, threw a long ball out the wing at Armstrong. He shows tremendous footwork here to uh, beat Stevie Morris. Plenty of support inside Steve Folks. Stevie Mortimer again reading play to back up, and Billy Johnston always backing up as he does. A great try to Canterbury, and it gets them back right back into the game. Well, the reason these variations work on the sixth tackle of running the ball and not kicking it is the defending side puts their winger back deep waiting for the kick. They have cover defence back waiting for the kick, which means their defensive line is short. And consequently, the attack has extra numbers on them. Well, I don't think I've seen a, a man quite as happy as that fellow Billy Johnson at scoring a try at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and he's still smiling out there. He's got a face on him like a split watermelon. Well, he's a man who's had, uh, I believe, what, three tries taken off him this year. Tony Armstrong preparing to take the conversion. One out of two. Although that man in yellow, John Gosher, is in charge of the game, the way I'm seeing it, Steve Mortimer is the fellow that's controlling it. 
Armstrong hits it nicely. He's got it. No worries if you're a Bulldog fan. You're leading by 12 points to four now. There's the little fellow, Mr. Magic. Yes, I just said Canterbury getting back into the ball game there. I, I thought that they were losing control a little bit. Uh, both sides, even though we've had the just over what, 27 minutes of play, they were still more or less just feeling each other out. Nobody had cut loose and uh, thrown the ball about, except for that long pass by Morton. The restart is there from O'Connor and Farrah. Out to the 22 line is Andrew. The way he's running uh, with such great purpose, he'd be the last man I'd be kicking off to, Bill Anderson. Yes, Andrew Farrah's a dynamic ball runner, and he's certainly one of those players you'd like to keep the ball away from. Chris Mortimer falling well, back into the Ted Glossop game plan. Kicking on the early tackles. Yes, I just don't know that Brian Johnson's uh, well enough to be able to run the ball from these situations. I think he's virtually committed to kick or to pass. I, I, just, I just think that leg's not right. So, Brian is kicking from on his 32, and that's a, a shorter kick, but the bouncers helped him, and Chris is just five metres inside his 22. Let's see the result of this exchange. It's out to Gearan's flank. Now, he's going to have a go. Johnson fell around behind him as if to say, let's run it. That's played, that, that, that's played at now. Anderson played at the ball, and uh, he's got Chris Mortimer in support. Yes, as soon as a player touches the ball or plays at the ball or passes the ball, it's immediately play on. Steve Mortimer to play it, just outside the 22. Line. Robinson. Yeah, Jeff Robinson there was found wanting for support. Uh, Robinson's just not a battering ram. Jeff Robinson's a player that can unload the ball in tackles, and I'd like to see some of these back row forwards and halves for Canterbury Banks down support him when he does make a run with the ball. He can get the ball away. There's the chip from Steve Mortimer. We've been waiting for it. Felled in the back play. Goja saw it, said play on. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that that should have been a penalty to Canterbury Banks down. I'm sure that Morden was interfered with. He is right on the halfway line. Stone. And Jack Walsh. Nice low tackle holding the St. George second rower from Taz Batiri. Trudget switches the point of the attack. Jansen. Johnston making the tackle. Trudget. Beatty. Now O'Connor to Morris. And Morris well taken by Armstrong. Five tackles gone for the Saints. The kick from O'Connor. High down to Chris Mortimer. Pass has been put down. Ivan Henjack has come up with it. Well, they're flirting with danger, both these teams. Yes, that's not a good position to push a pass there in your own quarter on the first tackle. That was just not necessary. Fraser. Ten metres out from the line. Bateri and Robinson, the tacklers. Graham Wynn hits it up hard, gets the pass to Henjack, and Henjack is over the line, but it's no try. Held up in goal. They continue to have trouble with this big man, and uh, on this occasion, Henjack read the play well and backed up. The great defence here by, uh, well, first and Mortimer to stopping these tracks, and Farrah, who's been superb in defence for Canterbury. John Gosha in a perfect position to rule on it. Saints win the scrum. Tony Trudget. Tony Trudget gets it down. It's a try. It's been given. Tony Trudget scoring from the quick service from the scrum base. Here's the replay. The scrum was won and Henjack worked a little play there with Fraser. And Trudget, he was held by Farrah reached out and oh dear that looks short to me uh, ball on the line to try very very tricky decision for the referee to make Guerin has converted and the St George side comes storming back Canterbury 12 Saints 10 
Well, the St George team have shown us for the last five weeks they just refuse to lie down. They're going to stand up and be counted yet again here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. This is Steve Morris. There'll be plenty of talk about that try that was given by the referee to Tony Trudgett. Graham Hughes was looking at me and I think he tended to agree with the way I saw it. He seemed to plant it down on its point and the point was short of the line. Yes, I thought it was, Ray. I, uh, I, I did thought, think he uh, planted on the point and uh, the ball ended up being pushed across the line after I th that. I thought it was put on the line and on the line to try. Well, there it is. So there's uh, a variation of opinion in the commentary box. Chris Mortimer. Oh, that's dangerous football by Chris Mortimer. They're the sort of things that make coaches tear their hair out. Steve Mortimer now. Away from dummy half. Gives it back to Chris Mortimer. Picks up Billy Johnston. Billy Johnston. Down to the 22 line. Look for Canada to move the ball uh, wide to the right. Here's the kick by Steve Mortimer. It's going into touch. And a scrum will go down five metres out from the Saints line. from dangerous play they're now just five meters away from the Saints line but the St George side get the penalty Billy Johnson's never done so much running has he <laughs> even at training <laughs> Line kick is uh, founded on the Saints 22. Jansen. Or Walsh it is, in fact. And now Stone. There's no doubt about the two players on the field who are creating most problems. As Morris has brought down 10 metres on his side of the halfway. Win for St George and Steve Mortimer for Canterbury. Trudge it on the run around with O'Connor and oh, Beatty has left it behind him when the overlap had been well and truly created. He's away from Gary Hughes, got the pass to Steve Gearan. Gearan's over halfway, inside 45, kicks ahead. Was he felt late? That'll be answered later. It's in the end goal and forced by Chris Mortimer and the penalty has been given to St George for a late tackle on Steve Gearan. Here was Gearan pursued by Farrah. He drops it onto the right foot and then gets a push in the back. Gearan, can he send them to the break at 12 points all? It's looking good. He's got it. What a great kick by Gearan from the touchline. The Saints and the Bulldogs at 12-12. Taking that bet. Kick off by Canterbury. Down to the flying Steve Morris. Canterbury aren't looking at, at uh, looking down the barrel of an 18 to nil deficit like last weekend, but they certainly are keeping St George in the match by making a lot of silly mistakes and giving away far too many penalties. Yes, they're just making errors that they don't have to make, errors that are completely unforced. They're putting all the pressure back on themselves and, and giving St George an armchair ride, really. Billy Johnston is injured in the back play for Canterbury as it's played by St George out on the 32 metre line by Graham Wynn. Fed back for the kick by Brian Johnson. Yes, yeah, St George have persisted with this uh, with this kicking game right throughout the semi-final series and it's paid dividends for them. Tony Armstrong. Now this is where St uh, Canterbury Bankstown just have to settle down their play. Nothing fancy for two or three rucks. Just hit the ball up, get some momentum, get some easy yardage and then they can look to spread the ball open or blindside. But they don't have to do anything yet. Anderson playing it. Pittman. Mortimer. Hughes. Cuts out Farrah. Finds Peter Mortimer uh, out wide. Actually, Chris came into the play and got a magic pass away. Peter Mortimer's gone downfield. Andrew Farrah takes it up inside the 32. There goes Steve Mortimer. He's away. Scores. 
Steve Mortimer. Well, that had Mortimer written right across it. The three brothers all involved. What a super try. The three brothers combining. Steve was there. Then Gary Hughes. The cutout pass found Chris Mortimer. Then Peter. Peter does very well. He dummied and jinked and got around Steve Morris. And then on the inside, here comes Andrew Farrar. Then he takes it to the 22 and finds Steve Mortimer. And he's off to score in front of the Bradman stand patrons. Tony Armstrong from right in front. He won't get a simpler kick. Makes no mistake. And Canterbury Bankstown leads St George by 18 points to 12. Max Krillich, both sides have been flirting with danger um, and on at least a couple of occasions they've paid a very, very costly price. Uh, yes, Ray, I think they're playing some, uh, at times, very poor semi-final football, but uh, at the same time they're playing some good semi-final football by kicking the ball down the opposition's half. Full credit to Steve Mortimer, what a game he's having, as is Graham Wynn and Andrew Farrar. And Billy Johnson, when Steve Mortimer scored that try, it was Billy Johnson right behind him. Like, he's having a great jo game, Billy Johnson, a great hooker. Yeah, an obedient hooker, always following through there, hoping to pick up that uh, elusive try, which wasn't quite so elusive for Billy today. In fact, the man making that comment uh, had the happy knack of always being there or thereabouts in case he's required. Max Krillich, who's with the 10 sports team right through the big finals of the... Winfield Cup 1983. Robinson. 34 metres out from his line. Tackle number five. Chris Mortimer. Brian Johnson. Taken by Farrah. Very unlike Brian Johnson to continually look to kick the ball and uh, as I think Billy Anderson pointed out at the start of the match, he, the rumour has it that he was carrying an injury into the match and uh, he is really tentative. Yes, I'm also I'm a believer in the team uh, keeping seven points in front of their opposition if you possibly can. I just think that six points isn't enough and you need seven for breathing space and if Canterbury Bankstown can get the ball back, I still think, even though it's very early in this game, wouldn't be anything wrong with kicking a field goal. So the kick from Brian Johnson finds touch just outside the quarter. I think Chris Mortimer had in his mind, I'll rake this ball back into the field of play, and he probably had memories of an incident that happened at Lang Park this year. Yes. And the try resulted. Also, if he'd have touched the ball and then it had gone into touch, it would have given St George the feed and the loose head. Canterbury getting the scrum penalty against St George for not packing it on the mark very close to the halftime break as Farrah finds the line about eight meters into St George's area it's unlike Canterbury to try and parcel things up here too uh, look for them to try and move the play uh, infield one or two rucks and uh, utilize the blind side well, this is Folks coming out of a very ordinary attempt at tackle, but he's lost it. And St. George with uh, Walsh playing it. Now win. Trudgett. Hughes and Pittman holding him back on the St. George quarter. There's the siren. Morris gets the kick in. And it'll be fielded by Chris Mortimer. And uh, he comes to Beatty, is tackled. That's the end of the first 40 minutes with five tries scored. Canterbury Bankstown leading St. George by 18 points to 12. Last time on Backpage Live. South Sydney's Isaac Luke has contested the grading of his dangerous contact charge. His defence was that he was only kicking Michael Lennis, so it shouldn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Backpage Live tonight. If credit card debt is hot on your heels. If you suffer from muscle aches, pains, cramps, or muscle spasms, Mega Magnesium's exclusive, highly absorbable magnesium can help. 
ethical nutrients. We can help you. Fox Sports World Rally Championship moments brought to you by Hyundai. It's really disappointing. For this rally, I certainly didn't want to make a mistake. On Pibic, I was off the road and people in the road. Oh, that was uh, really, really close. Yeah, I think it's a perfect weekend for me. Yeah. Complete my mistake. I just missed the note. I just went went way too fast. So. I could not dream to win this rally. It, it is something special. Fox Sports World Rally Championship moments brought to you by Hyundai. Oh, when in Mexico. Hmm. It's a bit sweet. <laughs> that's hot. Oh, that's very hot. Oh, how did this even happen? Bundle your hotel and flight on Expedia and get a better rate. Fixed right. I always go for fixed right. Except one time back in 67. Oh, it's a terrible. Bed facing the other way. Takes the emotion out of it. Avoid houses with hedges. You've got to have that reverse gearing, mate. Before an auction, smell the carpet. Puts everyone off. When you've heard all the talk, talk to NAB about our 10 ways to get ahead with a NAB home loan. More expertise, less opinion. And what is this? My work shirt. He's in. We're in. Are you? Always talking sport? Join the crowd.foxsports.com.au Gary Hughes delivers a pass that has gone to ground. Steve Morris, like lightning, has swooped upon it. Well, you'd think that uh, first grade footballers would learn by their mistakes, and obviously they haven't. And, and there's nothing that coach Ted Blossett can do about it. He would have said all he can say at half time. I know the sort of instructions he would have issued, and can we just completely denying those instructions? Walsh, Walsh within about seven metres. The Saints piling the pressure onto the Canterbury line. Win turns his back on the defence, looks for a runner, but Hemjack arrived too late. The line. There's Wynn, he'll score! Graham Wynn has picked up his second try! Oh, Canterbury has fallen apart! At the play, the ball. Now, see this one on the replay. Canterbury, so fragile at the play, the ball. Well, it's normally a slow start to a first half for Canterbury, but uh, the way they've started the second half, St George, well, their confidence is going to be sky high. Guerin gets the further two points for, Camp, for the uh, St George side. And it's 18 all, St George and Canterbury. And with a scoreline of 18 points all, uh, the making of replacements in the second half takes on even greater significance. As we've said before, once again here, a, an intelligent tactical replacement by either coach can either win or lose in the match. Tony Trudgett. Graham Wynn. Playing it on the 32 metre line. Now to Anderson, Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes. Gary is not having his usual solid game. Graham, he's uh, missed a couple of tackles and he. Well, he's he not, may not be 100%, eh? No, well, he has had a couple of bad knocks to the uh, side of his head. Uh, he's got very severe deep bruising. Uh, well, and that's why the head gear's there. You know, if you're going to write a book on what not to do when you've got the ball in your own quarter, that's exactly what you wouldn't do, what Canterbury have been doing for this match. Well, six more tackles as a referee. Goes right alongside the play. Steve Mortimer with the chip over the top. And uh, Stephen Folks is tackled from behind by Chris Walsh. Gary Hughes. Anderson. Chris Mortimer. Little Ivan Henjack. 
around the legs. Well, Chris has lost it getting up, so it'll be a scrum. Canterbury making so many simple mistakes. Turning the ball over to the Saints. Not quite this time, but they're in a scrum contest now with Saints feeding and the loose head. And Jack cuts out Trudget, picks up Beatty, but Farrow's up very quickly. How are you seeing it now, Max Krillich? Oh, well, Ray, I'm just uh, listening to you. I think that's exactly right. Uh, Canterbury are just giving the ball back and making stupid mistakes. And the longer this game goes on, I think St George might get into this game. They're, uh, they're making too many mistakes, and St George are showing that they can come back and pressure football. And uh, I think they might just do it if, if, uh, if Canterbury don't wake up to themselves. Mortimer feeds and it's at the same tunnel. And it's a Canterbury scrum win. Now to Gary Hughes, now to Peter Mortimer. He got away from O'Connor. But uh, Fraser cleaning up like a good lock forward. Now Gary Hughes, a shorter ball to Michael Pittman, who's held by Graham Wynn. Ten metres into Saints territory. Canterbury have to make, make their main objective here, not to try to score a try, but simply to control the ball. If they can do that, they'll get away with the match. Canterbury's got the penalty. Canterbury's got the penalty, and uh, John Gosher has penalised Graham Wynn for using his hand to, uh, if you like, massage the face of the player tackled. And it's going to be the shot at goal for Tony Armstrong. Well, I'm not sure that this is the right decision for Tony Armstrong. He's not a long kicker of the ball, and I doubt that he'll kick the ball dead. Uh, I think if I was a coach, I would have preferred him to put the ball out. Steve Rogers has shed the tracksuit. And uh, limbering up back in the St George dressing room. Man, they... Referred to as the Prince of Setters, uh, will be, I believe, into the action very shortly. Yes, and I think uh, Masters are playing pretty close to the action. I wouldn't be surprised to see him throwing the lock forward. Jimmy Armstrong lining it up. Two from three. That's the 10 metre line you see that he's on. And he's 34 metres out. Kicking to the Randwick end, it hasn't got the length, and Steve Gearan comes away with it to be taken again by Andrew Farrer. I hope you're watching the screen closely in case your name pops up for the 10 Toyota $1,000 cash. Of course, we come on down next weekend to more cash, P&O Cruises, and the Toyota Tourago. It's all happening on 10 sports between now and that full-time siren on grand final day. I hope you're enjoying it. This is Chris Mortimer. So he's running it, taken by O'Connor and Tragic. Brother Steve. Stretching it to another brother, Peter. Taken on the 22 line. Turn back inside. Now it's with Pittman. Eighteen points all. Robinson, Anderson, Farrah. Taken by Fraser. You saw an example there of the sort of things that Jeff Robinson can do with the ball if he's given support. He can offload the ball in tackles. Kick by Chris Mortimer. Michael Beatty went in for the charge down. Brian Johnson replies. Canterbury slow as players, very slow to get back and support Chris Morton, their fullback here. Graham Wynn. I haven't seen this much kicking in a, a game of rugby league in goodness knows how long. You'd almost think you're at the MCG. Oh, the mistake made by Canterbury. 
The scrum will go down just outside the 22. Taz Batiri knocking on. Penalty to Canterbury. He's got Henjack for the feed. There's a lucky pair of uh, shorts for Steve Mortimer. They're a lot uh, lighter in colour than the normal Canterbury blokes, but uh, for those who can think back to 1980, he's had them since that grand final. Hey, he's lost them. So it's out now with Batiri, who would be saying himself, I almost created huge drama for us. I've got to do something about it as he took that ball up. And here's Robinson. Colin Fraser there doing a lot of tackling. He doesn't get many reps, Colin, but he does a lot of cleaning up work. Gary Hughes showing it, then trying to split the defence, but Walsh has got him. I'd still be thinking about picking a field goal. There's going to be nothing in this game in the final. Hooter wins, and why not get your one-point advantage and get it now? Folks, now Steve Mortimer. Grub kicking for touch, and it's across the touchline, just out from the corner first. So the scrum will go down five metres out from the St George line. It has been a feature of this game, the kicking by Steve Mortimer. Vital scrum for the Saints. 7-4, they read out to the Saints, Henjack to Trudget. Would you be thinking of a drop goal uh, this far from the full-time siren, Max? I certainly would, Ray. You've got to get in there and put the opposition under pressure. And the other thing is that when they're having these kicking duels, they must follow the kicker down, like kick follow the ball down, put, put a bit of pressure on the defence all the time. They're, they're not doing it. They're having these long kicking duels, but no one's getting behind the fullback and following the ball. Canterbury attacking Robinson, a little juggle before getting it off to Johnston. Now to Captain Chris Anderson, back to Steve Mortimer, on to John Coveney. Tony Trudgett's got him and Coveney is put to ground, he's lost it. Wynn gets a pass away, it's with Henjack and Henjack is met by Pittman and put down. Not only are they making mistakes in their own quarter, they're making, in the, in, making them in the opposition quarter as well and of course that's just as bad. Jansen, here's Steve Rogers coming onto the Sydney cricket ground. And listen to the fans roar as they realise that uh, Steve is coming out. Dulling spins it back for Brian Johnson. 27 minutes of the match remaining. As an opposition coach, that's the sort of sight you don't like to see. Steve Rogers coming on as a replacement. Steve Mortimer making hay while the sun shines. Out now to Chris Mortimer. And he's... Uh, Held by Graham Wynn, Johnston, Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes. Grub kicks ahead for the men out wide. There's a chance for Farrah. Farrah inside. Oh, Anderson can't take it. And it's forced in goal by Mike O'Connor. Michael Beatty injured in goal. Gary Hughes, that brilliant little kick of his. Andrew Farrah. Didn't even appear as though he wanted to try and beat Ivan Henjak on his own. I take it that he would have taken over the role of captaincy as well. Would that be a reasonable assumption? Well, he may well have. I can tell you one thing. He's not going to pack down in the front row where John Jansen was. They'll, uh, they'll put Chris Walsh in the front row, I'd say. And uh, Rogers, I assume, would go to lock. Yeah, but look for Rogers to try and control play around the rucks, trying to set uh, forwards off himself, especially the likes of Graham Wynn. Oh, sure, he'll be there to organise play. He'll direct traffic, whether he's captain or not. This is Folks, hit and hit hard by Graham Wynn. Still 18 points all as Coveney goes ahead. Gary Hughes, taken by Rogers. 
proud Roars as Steve makes his first tackle. Yeah, as you can see there, the Rogers, uh, the Rogers reading of defence. He didn't commit himself to a tackle. He waited to see who the runner was. When there was no runner, he picked Gary Hughes off. He's an excellent reader of both defence and attack, Steve Rogers. Five tackles gone. Steve Mortimer goes for the drop shot. It's uh, just wide. Just wide. And I think Steve was indicating to the referee that it was touched in flight. Obviously, if it was touched in flight, it wouldn't have brought him the points, but he was uh, more concerned about where this match is going to restart from. And it's coming out to the 22, indicating the referee was... Uh, well, that's a little bit embarrassing for Steve. He was looking for traction, but it wasn't there. A few showers of rain, I guess, has made this top surface just a little slippery. Robert Stone. A lot of these players, I'm sure, will be inspired by the presence of Steve Rogers. Henjack. Beatty. Long ball, beautifully directed. Fraser. Here's Rogers. Now it's Walsh. Yes, we can see there Rogers dropping into that first pass roll off the ruck, organising the play for St George. Now he spins it back for Brian Johnson. That kick is going down to Chris Mortimer on his own 22. And that's a nice take by Johnson, but he's well back inside his quarter line. Steve Mortimer getting under it. Now they've got a chance to run it here, Canterbury. They've got extras on that side of the field. Gary Hughes, Peter Mortimer to the halfway, taken by Rogers. Hughes, Steve Mortimer, pass around the back door, picked up by his brother Chris, and now given to Folks. And Folks is taken by Dowling. Cricket pitch area, 18 points all. Steve Mortimer gets that kick in and it's sitting up long enough for Brian Johnson to get back for it. Taken by Pitt. This is where Canterbury got to keep the pressure on now. They've got to keep St George inside their own 22 and hope to either get the ball back at the end of six or force St George just to kick it. And uh, if they have to kick him in their 22, Chris Mortimer should be taking it around about halfway and set Canterbury right on the attack again. Yeah, loose ball for the Saints and uh, cleaned up by Graham Wynn. Nail-biting stuff again. As if last Saturday's match wasn't close enough. This one is getting down to the wire in similar fashion. Certainly not as good a game, but uh, the closeness of these scores in the semi-finals that we've seen so far and again today has certainly kept the fans... On their toes as Brian Johnson again sends this kick down. It's a pretty short kick, really. Uh, Chris Mortimer is going to run it. Finds Anderson. Now it's with Farrah. And uh, Andrew is easy prey for the St George defence. I just have the feeling that someone on the Canterbury Bankstown team needs to make a decision that they're going to call the ball and simply take it straight up into the St George players and do that as often as they possibly can to get this team going forward because they're just not doing that. Robinson getting a good ball down to Steve Mortimer and then it's out to Taz Batiri getting across the ground and eventually tackled by Mike O'Connor. Peter Mortimer goes blindside, throws the dummy and makes good ground but Steve Morris has got him and it'll be a scrum as he goes into touch. Midway 22, halfway, the Saints end of the field. Rogers packing into the lock forward position. Henjack, 10 metres short of the halfway line. Trudgett to Rogers. Now to O'Connor. And O'Connor almost able to make the break. Yes, O'Connor's a player that we've seen in the past do a lot when he's got the ball. Haven't seen it today, and uh, maybe he's just about to explode. Well, there's another mistake, and you know neither of these sides have produced the sort of football today we know they're capable of. They're both well below their best, and you know they're just uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic mistakes from two top sides. Yes, I think it, you might just like to call it nervous football. Uh, 
I think uh, neither side has settled into their proper pattern. And uh, I, just, I just got the feeling the game's poised now that the next scorer will probably go on to win the game. Well, there's no doubt in my mind what I'd be doing. I'd be putting this ball out, working it for four and kicking a field goal. What would you be telling your troops, Max? Well, I'd take the leaf out of Bill's, uh, Bill's hand there. Uh, that's exactly what I would be doing. Uh, there's some very negative football being played out there at the moment. It's really uh, school kid stuff, some of it going around. It's Max, no one just wants to run forward with the ball. No, there's no momentum, there's no backing up. There, there is, it's really quite uh, petty football at the moment. I'd like, these are two very good sides playing very ordinary football. Coveney tackled in the centre of the ground on the St George 22. Gary Hughes switching it to Chris Mortimer. Now they're perfectly placed right now. Johnston spins it to Folks, and Folks has tackled 12 metres out. Canterbury and St George, 18 points all, and a penalty. St George inside the five. A penalty to Canterbury Bankstown. I think St George must have had it in their mind also that Hughes was about to kick a field goal. They stood up very flat inside the five and of course they've given away a penalty. Shades of Balmain and Parramatta. Yes. Tony Armstrong, a chance to take Canterbury to the lead. Takes a pretty big divot but he's got the two points. And Canterbury Bankstown back in the lead. 20 points to 18. Wonder will St George meet with similar good fortune if and when they are on the attack down inside the Canterbury 22. Well, we'll look with interest and see how Canterbury banks down use up this six tackles. Uh, you know, they've got their nose back in front again. There's no way that they have to score. All they've got to do is play sensible football. They should simply wrap the ball here for five tackles the same way, then kick the ball downfield for territorial gain. They just don't have to overplay their game at all. Robinson. Now Mortimer, Hughes, Chris Mortimer makes the extra man in the back line, but Colin Fraser's across there in defence with Ivan Henjak. Well, they've moved the ball eight passes and lost five yards. Yeah? Now it's folks. Front on tackle for Steve Rogers. Five gone for Canterbury. Chris uh, Mortimer not behind the play. The ball, Andrew Farrer. It was who kicked that. Now Brian Johnson. Yes, this is better play by Canterbury Banks down. Andrew Farrer, who's a long kicker of the ball, has gone back to full back for the kicking duels. We saw that Chris Mortimer was there, and we just couldn't match it with Brian Johnson in these kicking duels. Now Farrer's there to do the job. Well, I certainly wouldn't be kicking from there, but I'd be running it. Yes, I agree with Andrew Farrer running on that occasion. Use up four or five tackles. Try and get yourself uh, about 30 or 40 metres out from your own line, then kick for touch. Sun again coming down on the Sydney cricket ground. This is where your players are very tired, your front rowers, your back row forwards, but they've just got to forget that tiredness and hit the ball up one off the ruck from dummy half and so on to get that necessary yardage. Steve Mortimer out to Pittman, back to Robinson. Robinson finds a hole. He gallops through it. He's over halfway, inside 45, and then Steve Mortimer backs him up to be tackled. I he didn't support there, and there should have been good support. Johnston. Let's Last look for a kick now. here from Gary Hughes. Gary's with the ball now. Throws the dummy. Gets inside the 22 line. The ball has been lost. And he'll play the knock on or play the ball going forward. And a scrum six metres inside the St George 22. It's Chris Walsh down injured for the Saints. With Canterbury leading 20 points to 18. night again we're back at six o'clock the full replay of the clash of Manly and Parramatta 
Well, already coach Roy Masters has put one of his uh, Trump replacements on in uh, Steve Rogers, but he's also got Graham O'Grady up his sleeve. And with St George now being behind by two points, maybe it won't be long before O'Grady takes the field. Hendrak getting a pass around the back to Beatty. Peter Mortimer making the tackle. It's up with Hendrak and now O'Connor. O'Connor gets inside Gary Hughes, but Stephen Folks made a good tackle. That could have resulted in anything. Very good lock forwards tackle there in cover defence. Graham Wynn. A dual try scorer for the Saints. And there's the penalty again from John Gosher that he gave against Graham Wynn in the opening minutes of the second half. Just a little bit of overindulgence, if you like, from the defence after making the tackle. Mike Beatty taking the touch finder. And the tap to be taken by Dowling, 10 metres on his side of the halfway. The run around and Walsh takes it up the centre. Oh, he throws a pass that came off the boot of John Dowling. It's with Mike O'Connor. Play on and six more tackles. O'Connor weaving a passage back up the centre. Never played in a losing side of the Sydney cricket ground, Mike O'Connor. Rogers delivering a nice ball there, but uh, Colin Fraser didn't have the speed to get through the opening. Saw some class there from Rogers. A little bit of a jinky was able to draw one man in, pull him off a uh, pull a defender off an attacking player and create an overlap. It didn't come off, but it nearly could have. Penalty to the Saints. Same ruling as before. Having made the tackle, not getting off the man in possession. This time, Andrew Farrow, the offender. And Steve Gearan is going to attempt a shot at goal. Kick one from the touchline today. He hits this one. It's got the direction, got the length. Oh, can he kick? Can he kick Steve Gearan? Saints and Canterbury. 20 points all now. Paul Langback comes down to make a replacement in the Canterbury side. Well, one Canterbury Banks down replacement about to be made. Uh, young Paul Langmack down on the sideline, but it wouldn't at all surprise me to see Greg Brentnell and maybe even Jim Lee thrown into this game very, very shortly. Uh, Brentnell in particular, he's got a tremendous kicking game. He's, he's a fellow that can save the game for you going up for a bomb or with a, one of those great cover defending tackles. Win. Walsh. Armstrong. Wrestled to the turf by O'Connor. Gary Hughes. They're just not setting for anything, Canterbury Banks. Now it appears to me that every play the ball's a new experience. And once again, I've, I've just got to repeat, if they can spear the ball up here for three or four tackles and then look for, look for a field goal... Not Intercept! Morris! Sorry, Bill. No, no. It was just, uh, that was exactly an example of what we were saying. They didn't really set for anything. They just took the ball in through a pass willy-nilly rather than try and look for that field goal, which could win them this match. The Dragons on the halfway. Johnson, BG, BG through a gap to the 32 line. And Steve Fakes again saved a situation that could have resulted in a try. What a great player he is. Hemjack, Rogers, drop goal attempt by Rogers, and it's... Just why? Yes, but no one had to tell Steve Rogers to kick a field goal. Rogers only been on the field a few minutes, but he was immediately looking for it. He knows that this game's going to be touch and go, and that one didn't miss by far. The Rank Arena replay of the attempt from Steve Rogers. John Coveney replaced by Paul Langmack. Robinson, Armstrong, a gain of 15 metres, Gary Hughes, Mortimer, Pittman, 
Win up the top, Henjack down below. Play near the halfway, Mortimer looking for the line and he's found it again. Scrum to go down about 12 metres out from the St George line. Well, a very important scrum, this one. There are only 10 minutes to go for full time, and uh, Billy Johnson's proved himself to be one of the best hookers in Sydney, winning balls against the feed. And there's another one. Steve Mortimer coming the blind. Langmack, Hughes. 10 metres out from the line. The Bulldogs on the attack. Langmack. Five metres out. Setting themselves for the drop goal. Johnston. Setting themselves. I just can't see why they're waiting. They should just pop it over. Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes. And here's Chris Mortimer. Swallowed by the defence. Two rucks too late, that field goal attempt. It'll probably come now. Gary Hughes. Gets it back to Jeff Robinson. He puts up the bomb. Paul Langmack, I thought, was in front of him, but he's not involved anyway. And Graham Winner's lost the ball. Graham Winner's lost the ball, and a try has been given. A try has been given. I do believe the try has been given to Michael Pittman, but it may have been Paul Langmack. Well, Jeff Robinson, he came up with the ball that. Well, precisely the wrong moment, which has turned out to be exactly the right moment. Let's see who does actually get awarded the try. Langmack. It's Paul Langmack who's been given the try. The kick by Armstrong, right on line. Canterbury Bankstown surged to a 26 to 20 lead. Burgess has gone on to St George in jumper 21, replacing Brian Johnson. Eight minutes of time remaining. Chris Anderson. Just a little bit more on that misfortune for Graham Wynn. I was going to say he'd scored two tries and he was proving a real thorn in the side of Canterbury Bankstown and it, it really wasn't something that he deserved to be on the end of Graham Wynn. And a couple of good decisions there by Canterbury Banks down forwards. They had opportunities to pop up passes but decided not to and they were the right decisions. Canterbury Banks down have got to do nothing to win this game except defend and hold the ball for their six tackles. That's all they need to do. Steve Gearan tackle just inside the 22. Canterbury shouldn't be the ones to come up with errors here. They should stay well back out of the five metre. Try and keep St George down here and get this ball back off them after six tackles. And then the field goal uh, becomes even more important than it was before because it gives them that seven point break. Stone, a short ball down for Trudgett to deliver to Henjack and on to Beatty and Beatty is tackled. Eight metres short of the halfway. Walsh. Impressive second rower is this fellow. Ah, oh, that's a good take by Tony Armstrong. Tremendous take by Armstrong. And Steve Mortimer is down in the back play with Graham Wynn. They're both injured. Well, there's no doubt, Max, on the form displayed by these two sides today, uh, they couldn't, playing this brand of football, hope to beat the loser of tomorrow's big clash. And Peter Mortimer's leading the field. Oh. I would say they'd have to uh, improve about 100%, 100% there, uh, Ray, because they've played pretty ordinary football today. If I were Canterbury now, I would keep on taking it straight up the middle and go for their seven-point lead. Gary Hughes. Langmack, taken by Rogers. Gary Hughes, Steve Mortimer, Jeff Robinson. Got the ball away nicely to Folks. 
Five tackles gone now for Canterbury. 26 points to 20. The Bulldogs holding the lead on most occasions through this match. St George, I can't recall them actually leading. They've drawn level on many occasions, but um, I don't think they've actually had Canterbury chasing them. Jarvis. On the quarter. Rogers. Henjack. Guerin. Tidied up by Farrah and Langmack. Rogers giving it to Stone. And he's outside the 22. This is going to take a stroke of genius from somebody in that St. George side. And looking at uh, the ranks, it would seem that it's firmly on the shoulders of Steve Rogers. Yes, I'm looking at the Canary Banks down side. Steve Mortimer is limping very badly, and I just think for, uh, for his good and the sake of the side, he's got to come off the field. One of those players that doesn't like to come off, but he's just going to have to come off. I think it's in the best interest of the side. Neil Baker almost having a midfield collision with the referee. Now it's Gary Hughes. Chris Mortimer. Gary Hughes. Batiri. Looking very much like that old theory is going to work again. It's almost an impossibility to win from four or five. Baker. Back with Anderson. Taken by Guerin and uh, Beatty, that's the turnover. Rogers. Tony Davies is coming out for Canterbury. He'll replace Steve Mortimer. And Jack Fraser. Oh, he had Burgess on his left. He didn't see him. And Jack pumping it up to that blind side for Jarvis. He's held by Farrah. Strong in defence today, Farrah. Dowling. Henjack, Trudgett, dummy on the run round, back to uh, Burgess, Burgess is over the halfway, Burgess, he's inside the 32 metre line, and the defence has got him, Steve Mortimer, the ball lost, Canterbury's got the ball. Steve, we've told you, is was limping badly, but he realised how desperate that situation was getting by the second. And Fraser appeared to have it, and then it was knocked out of his hands by a Canterbury player. And Steve Mortimer coming up with it. I would have thought the, the scrum would have been used to restart, looking at that on the slow motion replay. Langmack. Steve Mortimer brought from the field. Gary Hughes. Steve Folks. 26 to 20, three minutes of time remaining. Anderson, Robinson. Johnston. Lost by Davies, picked up by Hughes, given to Bateri. Armstrong's on his left. Trudgett and Beatty making the tackle. Now it's with Baker. That's not a bad kick from Neil Baker. Oh, well. Wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> it was like a nine-iron. It uh, hit and came back. Infield for Guerin to be tackled now. Ten metres out from the Saints line. Burgess. Burgess running to the 22 before he even caught sight of the defence. So tired are they. Jarvis plays it. Walsh. He's played strongly for St George. Twenty-six points to twenty. The Bulldogs. 
The pass has gone over the shoulder. Given away by O'Connor to Hemjack. He's got support coming. Morris is up there with him. There goes Morris. Morris, he's going to score. Yes, Steve Morris has scored. Steve Morris has scored. But now, brace yourselves for the for the kick that really, really is going to mean so much to the St George fans. Hemjack's pass went off the shoulder of a colleague. O'Connor picked it up and gave it quickly to Hemjack. Hemjack went over the halfway. He had support both left and right. Beatty left, Morris right. Morris beat the last line of defence and plunged into the Paddington Hill corner to give Steve Gearan one heck of a kick to come. He's nine metres in, 22 metres out. He hits it and it's getting wide. No goal. No goal for Gearan. And that would seem like the end of the Dragons. 26-24 to Canterbury. The tension of the three semi-finals so far in the Winfield Cup has been of enormous proportions. And the promoters certainly couldn't have hoped to come on down towards their final and grand final in better fashion, not forgetting, of course, what's still to come tomorrow. Well, the game's still not over here yet. A minute showing on the clock. There's plenty of uh, enough brilliant individuals out there to try and turn again. Mike O'Connor is held by Baker and Folks and Batiri. Henjack passes, picked up on the bounce by Rogers, given to Burgess. Burgess taken by Tony Armstrong. Over the top came Langmack. Rogers passes to Steve Morris. He went for the little grub kick ahead. Six very simple tackles here from the Canterbury forwards. All up from the dummy half. Hang on to that ball, and that should be the end of, this, end of the section. Langmack to play it. 15 metres out. Stone lifting the foot prematurely. A penalty to Canterbury Baxter. And that would uh, put the last nail in the St George coffin for 1983 with Langmack taking the kick for line. The siren must be about to sound. Canterbury will use six plays and they will basically shut this down. They'll kill it. They don't have to. It's all over with Canterbury Bankstown defeating St George by 26 to 24. Tries for the Bulldogs to Farrah, Johnston, Steve Mortimer, Paul Langmack, Armstrong five goals, and for the Saints, win two tries. Trudgett and Morris, a try apiece, and Guerin four goals. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports.